So, welcome to another episode of FMV Oddities. Today, I'm going to be looking at the 1995 PC CD-ROM first-person shooter point-and-click adventure hybrid, Bloodwings Pumpkinhead's Revenge. Now, this game is loosely based around the film Pumpkinhead 2, Bloodwings, even though the title's slightly different, and it is an early-ish attempt at using FMV from films to tie into a game with a few specially shot sequences added in. Now, the game was developed by BAP Interactive, and yes, I said BAP, so you can stop sniggering at the back there, it's not BAPS, but BAP, and was published by Electronic Arts, even though when you actually look at the game's box, and when the game itself boots up, there is nothing to indicate Electronic Arts have anything to do with this title. It appears to be the Motion Picture Corporation of America, whoever they are. Anyway, the game takes the form initially of a first-person shooter similar to Doom or Wolfenstein 3D. However, you can then interact with FMV sequences, as we'll see. So... Let's uh, fire up some gameplay footage here that I captured using DOSBox and I'll show you what we mean. So here we are into the game, this is the intro sequence, and as you can see the quality of the FMV isn't exactly what you would qualify as world class. Even though this was running on PCs at the time, it was designed to run on a machine based on a 486-33MHz system using a very basic SVGA graphics card, so it's not the best. Now, loading into the game here, and as you can see... It is a pretty standard first-person perspective game. It, the engine itself that's done for the 3D isn't too bad. It's not the best in the world, but it's not the worst either. Now, you have to shoot these enemies and then enter into this crazy vortex so you can collect some crystals. Now, these crystals are used to enter the main FMV sequences. As you can see, these are just simple on-rails randomly um, run FMV sequences. Every time you hit one of those vortexes, you'll be transported to a slightly different one. But you have to grab these crystals as you go past them to collect them. And yeah, it's just a little on-rail sequence, fairly similar to something like Microcosm or Sewer Shark, except with even less interactivity, because literally you are just clicking a mouse cursor on the unit. So as you can see, I'm just uh, wandering around a little bit here, and what you're looking out for is those dangling eyeballs in the air. Once you find one of them, you select, make sure you bring your cursor up, select the crystal, click on the video, have an epileptic fit, and it drops you into some footage from the game where you can click on the footage and pick up items. Now. In this clip, you'll see one of the game's stars, Andrew Robinson. He of Hellraiser and Star Trek Deep Space Nine fame, as well as the original Dirty Harry. Now, there's not much else I can grab in this sequence. And as you can see, like I said, the quality of the footage isn't great. It was passable back in the day on a CRT monitor, but on a modern day display, it looks terrible absolutely terrible it shows the limitations of the codec that was used ah and coming up now once this good old boy has done his little introduction is somebody that was the film and the game's big selling point this folks is bill clinton's younger brother yep it's another member of the clinton clan and um yes of course like every clinton he plays an instrument, I'll be in this case a guitar, not a saxophone. 
it's it's quite sad really that he was used as a selling point for this game and the film. I mean, he's just Bill Clinton's younger brother. There's nothing special about him apart from that weird mullet that he's got going on. But you know, he's I suppose it was some level of celebrity, although when the game stars Andrew Robinson and Soyel Moon Fry and also features cameos from people such as Kane Hodder, Linnea Quigley, it necessarily wasn't needed given the target audience of the film and the game, but there you go. Where you see back into the maze, you have a look at the map there, and you can see it's that's quite a large map and there's not a huge amount uncovered yet. But this is this is how the game plays out. Certainly in its first phase, anyway, you wander around this maze doing this. There are two phases that follow this. Another one which is similar where you will get to interact with pumpkin head warning, epilepsy alert coming up. And a third and final stage, which is more of a just a straightforward shooter until you meet up with pumpkin head in the centre of the maze. Now Oh, here we go. Good old Kane Hodder there with the backwards baseball cap on, horror icon. Anyway, as I was saying, you play through the game. The idea is to collect items in these cutscenes, figure out which characters are going to die. Eventually, you move on to the second phase where you can attempt to interrupt what's going on in the world by saving characters, letting certain characters die. Ultimately, once you reach the end of that stage, you move on to the final stage, you fight loads of enemies, then you come across Pumpkinhead himself, and you have two options. You can either try and placate Pumpkinhead by giving him one of the toys that you will pick up by either saving or allowing Pumpkinhead to kill certain characters during the game's second phase, or you can just attempt to kick the crap out of him yourself. It gives you two slightly different endings, you get the toy right and Pumpkinhead is placated and his soul is finally laid to rest peacefully. You get it wrong, you destroy him but then he comes back and basically flips you off. But anyway. Yeah, I mean it's... The worst thing about this game is the controls are a bit floaty and slidey. You can see I'm sliding all over the place as I'm trying to move. And... The difficulty curve is strange because you can have really simple quiet bits like this where there's not much going on you can just quickly go from video sequence to video sequence and then you'll hit moments where there's just a sudden influx of enemies and your life me it gets absolutely destroyed now the bulk of the footage i think i've seen here which i i vaguely remember seeing this film back when i was at university and i think Every clip we've seen here pretty much was shot for the game. And it is it is pretty obvious. Clearly most of these actors are never going to appear in an actual film unless someone's really desperate for somebody to join the cast. But yeah, anyway, this is the basic premise of Bloodwings. As I said, it's, it's an FMV oddity, all right, with all kinds of weird stuff going on part standard fmv sort of clicky adventure game part fmv game with first person shooter elements part straightforward corridor first person shooter so yeah bloodwings So, that was Bloodwings. Now, if you really want to play this game, it occasionally does pop up on eBay, um, but there are channels whereby you can find it on the internet. Not that I'm going to give them away here, but you know there are certain archive organisations where you can find the game to play it. Uh, I was playing this using my original disc. Incidentally, this was the first ever title I bought once I got a CD-ROM enabled PC back in the day. I don't know whatever possessed me to spend 30 quid on this game, but I did. Such is life. But yes, anyway, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. This is hopefully the second in a series of videos about odd FMV titles. Um, if you've enjoyed yourself, please do hit the like button. Also, if you really enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, maybe even ring the bell. If you haven't liked it, hit the dislike button. That works as well. 
and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at 8 underscore 16 underscore 32 bit. So until next time, this is me, Wernerd Rob, saying so long and thanks for watching.